Hello and welcome to the news in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on Saudi Arabia's National Day. His Majesty the King expressed sincere congratulations to King Salman, wishing him abundant health, happiness and long life, as well as further progress and prosperity to the brotherly Saudi people. He praised the deep brotherly relations between the two countries and their peoples and their continuous development at all levels. His Majesty the King stressed Bahrain's keenness on deepening the long-standing ties and enhancing them. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, on Saudi Arabia's National Day. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince expressed his sincere congratulations to King Salman and further progress and prosperity to Saudi citizens. He commended the depth of relations between the two kingdoms and their citizens. His Royal Highness sent a similar cable to His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a number of volunteering students from the Royal University for Women in the presence of the Minister of Youth and Sports, Ayman Al Moyayad. His Highness affirmed that volunteer work reflects the progress and prosperity of the Kingdom, which enjoys the support of His Majesty the King. He praised the role of the youth's initiatives and which continue to make contributions domestically and internationally. He added that volunteer work is adding to the skill set and experience of the youth in all fields and wished the guests further success. His Highness extended congratulations to the custodian of the two holy mosques, as well as His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia on Saudi National Day. He wished Saudi Arabia further progress and prosperity under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, approved the appointment of the new CEO of the National Oil and Gas Authority holding Anuga, Mark Thomas. His Highness said that the appointment aims to increase the leadership experience that the company needs at this transitional phase. Thomas enjoys 38 years of experience in the industry, including British Petroleum, where his income was increased fivefold over the period of five years. For his part, Thomas said that the energy sector requires modern strategies, which he'll work to implement as per the directives of the board. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports, a president of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, paid a visit to Al Hid and Samahij clubs as part of His Highness's keenness to enhance communication with sports facilities. His Highness is keen on providing all the support needed to achieve the desired goals and strategies that contribute to elevating sports in the Kingdom and make further accomplishments. Deputy President of the GSA, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa and the CEO of the Authority, Dr Abdurrahman Asghar, were present. His Highness met with the head of Al Hid Club, Ahmed Salman Al Salman, and President of Samahij Club, Mohammed Ibrahim Hassan, and a number of members. His Highness praised the efforts of both clubs in honing the skills of the youth through holding a number of activities, which reflects the important role of the clubs in the sports march. His Highness then listened to a brief from the heads of both clubs regarding the future plans of the club that aim to enhance the sports sector in the Kingdom. The heads of both clubs expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his continuous support and hailed his efforts and contributions to serving the sports sector in the Kingdom.
The Supreme Judicial Council held its third regular meeting remotely, headed by the Deputy President of the Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Abdullah bin Hassan Abuenin. During the meeting, the results of the applicants for the Future Judges Project 2021 in the Sharia Judiciary, which aims to prepare qualified judges to take over the judiciary platform in the Sunni and Jafari Judiciary, were reviewed, and eight candidates were accepted, according to the criteria adopted by the Supreme Committee, supervising the project, based on the vision of the Supreme Judicial Council, which are in line with the internationally approved compensaries. The Council stated that those accepted will undergo intensive and specialised training in its theoretical and practical pl programmes and training in the courts so that the candidate is able to keep pace with the judicial work and is a qualified for the judiciary platform. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the current session of the GCC Ministerial Council, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziyani, headed the GCC delegation to the joint ministerial meeting of the GCC Ministers of Foreign Affairs and the European Union's delegation, headed by the High Representative of Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell. The meeting on the sidelines of UN General Assembly 76 was attended by Saudi Arabia's Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Fahan Al Saud, Kuwait's Foreign Minister and Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs of the State, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Nasa Al Mohammed Al Sabah, GCC Secretary General Dr. Nair Fala Al Hajraf, and GCC Countries Representatives. The meeting discussed means to enhance the GCC EU strategic partnership and boost bilateral relations at various levels, emphasised the importance of intensifying cooperation and reviewed political, economic, and security cooperation as well as other areas that would strengthen historical relations between the two sides. <coughs> the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziyani, headed the delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain, participating in the opening session of the general debate at the UNGA at the 76th session, which was held at the United Nations headquarters in New York, under the theme of building resilience through hope to recover from COVID, rebuild sustainability, respond to the needs of the planet, respect the rights of people and revitalise the United Nations. At the invitation of the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, and the President of the 76th Session at the UNGA, Abdullah Shahid. The session of the General Assembly was opened with a speech by the Secretary General, in which he noted that the unprecedented risks threatening the world today since the start of COVID-19, which had a significant and negative impact expressing a strong dissatisfaction with a lack of sufficient international cooperation in the field of vaccination. With regard to climate change, the UN Secretary General referred to the latest reports on climate change, which show the presence of dangerous signs in various regions and continents of pollution and disasters caused by climate change, calling on addressing climate change and its dangerous repercussions. On peace efforts, he urged for restoring dialogue between Israel and Palestine to achieve lasting, just and comprehensive peace and that countries should stand together to overcome all crises. While the President of the 76th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Abdullah Shah, had indicated that during the year and a half that the countries of the world have suffered silently and are concerned about the spread of COVID-19 and its repercussions around the world. He also clarified the most important achievements made by the countries of the world during the past period including the development of vaccines for COVID-19, noting that people desire during the next 12 months to achieve comfort and peace and to respond to the various challenges they face. He pointed out that during his presidency of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly, he looks forward to supporting the need for equal distribution of vaccines to vaccinate the world and that a high level session will be held on this issue, drawing attention to climate change and human rights as well. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziyani, met at the headquarters of the Permanent Mission of Bahrain to the United Nations in New York. The Minister of State of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Shakbut Nayan Al Nayan. The meeting highlighted the close brotherly relations that bind Bahrain and the UAE and means to enhance cooperation and joint coordination between the two brotherly countries in various fields to serve common interests and aspirations. The meeting also discussed a number of regional and international issues of mutual concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met in New York with the Jordanian Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates, Dr Ayman Asafadi. During the meeting, they reviewed the course of the distinguished bilateral relations and means to strengthen and develop them in various fields, as well as the developments of the political situation in the Middle East and discussed a number of topics and issues of common concern. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs met at the headquarters of the Mission of Bahrain to the United Nations with the Palestinian Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates, Dr Riyad al makalki The Minister of Foreign Affairs stressed the depth of the strong brotherly relations between Bahrain and Palestine, which are based on solid foundations of mutual respect and appreciation. He expressed pride and appreciation for the development and growth that relations have witnessed in light of the keenness of the two countries' leaderships to bolster cooperation. Dr Alziani also reiterated Bahrain's supportive and firm stance for the Palestinian cause and the right of the brotherly Palestinian people to establish the independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the Arab Peace Initiative and on the basis of the two-state solution and relevant international legitimacy resolutions. Dr Riyad al Malki praised the Kingdom's supportive stances for the Palestinian cause, hailing the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa for the right of the Palestinian people to establish the independent state. He expressed appreciation for the close bilateral relations between the two countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met in New York with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Thailand, Don Pramu Adwai, on the sidelines of the 76th. United Nations General Assembly. In the meeting discussed the strong historical friendly relations between Bahrain and Thailand and their development in various fields. It also reviewed means of strengthening bilateral cooperation in the economic and trade sectors for the benefit of the two friendly countries and peoples, in addition to a number of issues of mutual interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met also with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs of Kosovo, Donika Javak Schwartz. During the meeting, the two sides expressed the pride in the advanced level of the existing bilateral relations between Bahrain and Kosovo, looking forward to further consolidating these relations and moving forward in strengthening the areas of bilateral cooperation for the benefit of the two friendly countries and people. The Housing Minister, Basim bin Yaqub al-Hamar, will chair the 19th meeting of the GCC Countries Housing Ministers, organised by the GCC Secretary General, Dr Naif Fala Mubarak al-Hajraf. The virtual meeting will discuss highlighting GCC countries' housing work in regional and international forums, proposals regarding the GCC countries' housing week launch and conferences and workshops related to housing. Bahrain has condemned the continued launching of drones by the Houthi terrorist militia towards Kamis Mashhad in Saudi Arabia, in the latest of which was the launch of two booby trap drones this morning. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs praised the vigilance and efficiency of the Saudi Air Defence Forces that were able to intercept and destroy the drones. In a statement, the Ministry affirmed that the hostile terrorist acts carried out by the Houthi militia in a systematic and deliberate manner constituted a blatant and explicit attack on the sovereignty, stability and territorial integrity of Saudi Arabia as they target civilian objects and safe civilians. The Ministry stressed Bahrain's solidarity with Saudi Arabia in all the measures it takes to defend its security and stability. Bahrain has condemned and denounced the failed coup attempt in Sudan, noting that this is an unacceptable act aimed at destabilising security and stability, provoking chaos and threatening the interests of the Sudanese people. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed in a statement that Bahrain's full support with Sudan and its people regarding all steps, procedures and policies taken that we preserve Sudan's sovereignty and maintain its security and stability in order to achieve the aspirations of its people for peace, development and prosperity. The Director General of the Bahrain Institution of Public Administration, BIPA, Dr Riyad Mohammed bin Shams, gave a briefing through the National Communications Centre in which he said that BIPA has garnered a number of administrative achievements despite the effects of the pandemic which represented an incentive to innovate in order to achieve the goals of sustainable development. He affirmed carrying out the plans to improve government policies, strategies, resource management and improvement of services. The Director General said that the goal is to improve the skills, knowledge, training and contribution to policy making and to find solutions through research and talent development by assessment and personal counselling. He added that this is based on the government's strategic priority of improving the efficiency of the government's performance and achieving Vision 2030. He said affirmed that the training programmes have benefited over 6,900 employees despite the pandemic, which contributed to the promotion of many trainees to leadership positions.
Designers Sheikha Nur Al Khalifa and Sheikha Haya Al Khalifa of Noon by Nur made the London Fashion Week debut for spring 2022, presenting Collection 2 titled Light at East London's Rochelle School, home of artists and architects. Designer Sheikha Nur Al Khalifa said that a photograph of Bahraini pearl divers in the sarongs, gently gathered and tied at the waist, mixed with dreams of summer, sunshine, holiday memories and flowers, was the start of her spring collection development. Keeping the silhouette chic and clean, the designers maintain the codes to which they are drawn, mixing structure with cuts and details of men's clothing alongside feminine dresses and separates.